Alrighty guys, here's some information about mid-segments of a triangle. A mid-segment of a triangle is the segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So if I had the mid uh, midpoint of AB, right here, let's call it point D, and the midpoint of BC, let's call it point E, then if I connected those two, segment DE would be a mid-segment. And then if I drew uh, the midpoint of AC and called it maybe point F, then connecting E and F, EF would be a mid-segment. And I could even connect DF and say that DF is a mid-segment. Because all of those segments connect a midpoint to a midpoint. All right, the mid-segment theorem says that whenever I uh, connect those midpoints, then that mid-segment is gonna be parallel to that third side. So, parallel, remember our sign for parallel, to the third side. And it's also gonna be half of its length. Um, how am I gonna write that? Half as long. So, for example, if DE is 12, then uh, that DE segment must be half as long as CB. So if DE is 12, then CB must be two times 12, or 24. Okay, so the small segment, the mid-segment, is going to be half of the long segment. It says if CB is 18, okay, new situation here, CB is 18, then I know that the small segment is half of 18, so the small segment DE is going to be 9. That's how mid-segments work. Alrighty, in this first example, it asks us to find the endpoint, the coordinates of the endpoints of each mid-segment. I know that a mid-segment connects a midpoint to another midpoint. So that I know that D is the midpoint of AB, and E is the midpoint of BC, and F is the midpoint of AC. So I'll have to use the midpoint formula uh, for AB here to find the coordinates of D. So the midpoint formula tells me to add my x's, so negative 2 plus negative 6, which is what, negative 8, and then divide by 2. So the x coordinate is going to be negative 8 divided by 2, negative 4. The y coordinate, okay, we'll add the y coordinates and divide by 2. Negative 1 and negative 5 make negative 6, divide by 2, and I got negative 3. So the coordinates of D it's going to be negative 4, negative 3. And remember, I found that using the midpoint formula, which says add your x's. Oops. Add your x's, divide by 2. Man, that's all messed up. Add your x's, divide by 2. Add your y's, and divide by 2. It's like finding the average of the points. Alrighty, so to find the coordinates of E, add the x's, negative 2 plus 2, so that's 0, and divide by 2, and it's still 0. Add your y's, negative 1 and negative 7 make negative 8, and divide it by 2, and you get negative 4. Same thing for F. F is in between A and C, so add the x's, negative 6 and 2 make negative 4, divide it by 2, and you get negative 2. Add your y's, negative 5 and negative 7 make negative 12, divided by 2, you got negative 6. So there's the coordinates of point D, point E, and point F, using the midpoint formula. Alrighty, in this last example, um, it says that L, M, and N are midpoints, which makes these segments mid-segments. It says that AC is 14. 
So if AC, where are you? It's 14. Then we're supposed to find the length of segment LN. I noticed that LN is the mid-segment that's parallel to AC. That means LN is half of AC. So if AC is 14, then LN must be 7. If MN is 8, MN is 8, find AB. Well, I know that those two segments run parallel to each other. So um, if MN is 8, I know that AB has to be twice as long. So AB will be 16, thanks to the mid-segment theorem. All right, up next, if NC is 3, so where's NC is 3, find LM. LM is the mid-segment that runs parallel to BC. So if NC is 3, then I know that BN is 3 as well, because N is the midpoint of that segment. So that whole length is 6. Remember, the mid-segment that runs parallel to that side is going to be half as long. So if BC is 6, then LM must be half of that. So if BC is 6, LM is 3. All right, up next, if LN equals 5, so let's find LN right here. If LN is 5, then what equals 10? Well, if LN equals 5, then this length down here, AC, must be equal to 10. Cool, and I skipped this over here. LM is parallel to, well, you can see the magenta colored LM is running parallel to BC. And then it says AB, where's AB? AB's right here. You can see that the mid-segment that runs parallel with AB would be MN. All right, in the last part of this down here, it says that LM is 3X plus 1. So LM, the magenta segment, is 3X plus 1. And BC, the leg that runs parallel to it, let's get rid of some of this mess over here, is equal to 10x minus 6. They want us to find LM, so they want us to find x and then plug that back in. Well, I know that the mid-segment is equal to half of BC. Or the other way of saying that is if I took that mid-segment and multiplied it by 2, so 2 times LM, that should be equal to the same thing as BC, right? When LM was 3, BC was 6. So that should make sense, that BC is LM multiplied by 2. So I'll do the same thing, but LM is going to be 3x plus 1. And BC is going to be 10x plus 6. I'm oh, sorry, minus 6. I'll have to distribute. 6x plus 2 equals 10x minus 6. And I'll have to solve for x. So let's subtract 6x on both sides and add 6 to the other side. And x equals 2. Make sure you plug it back in to find LM. LM was 3x plus 1. So LM is equal to 3 times 2 plus 1. 7. Uh, this one's probably going to be similar. In M is X minus 1. I'm going to get rid of a lot of this mess. Psh, psh, psh. Goodbye, mess. Too much going on there. In M is X minus 1. So this segment is X minus 1. AB, so this segment that runs parallel to it, is 3X minus 7. Remember, the mid-segment, if I double that, it should equal the long segment, the long side there. So 2 times Nm, 
which is x minus 1, should be equal to the same length as AB, which is 3x minus 7. Distribute and solve for x. So I need all my x's on one side, so subtract the 2x and add the 7. So x equals 5, and then plug it back so we can figure out what AB is. Fifteen minus seven. Cool, and there it is.